Hello, and welcome to the Feeling Good Podcast, where you can learn powerful techniques to change the way you feel. I am your host, Dr. Rhonda Borowski, and joining me here in the Murrieta studio is Dr. David Burns. Dr. Burns is a pioneer in the development of cognitive behavioral therapy and the creator of the new Team Therapy. He is the author of Feeling Good, which has sold over 5 million copies in the United States and has been translated into over 30 languages. His latest book, Feeling Great, contains powerful new techniques that make rapid recovery possible for many people struggling with depression and anxiety. Dr. Burns is currently an emeritus adjunct professor of clinical psychiatry at Stanford University School of Medicine. Hello. (laughs) Rhonda. (laughs) Hello, David, (laughs) and welcome to our listeners around the world and throughout the galaxy. This is the Feeling Good Podcast episode 376. And what you're going to be listening to is personal work that David and I conducted at the recent Mexico City intensive with a participant from the intensive. And David's, we want to just warn you that David's audio is fantastic, clear, and easy to listen to. My audio is a little inferior, and Jessica's audio is a bit in between both of ours. But the content of the work that was done was so universal and interesting and mind-blowing that we thought it was worth it to post this audio that might take a bit of work and struggle to listen to for for the content to be um, disseminated. Yeah, and so we we hope it'll be helpful to to you and apologize uh, for the uneven um, audio quality. Sometimes a, a live session has so much power and value that we're willing to compromise a little bit. And we're going to be working on, this was an international conference in Mexico City, and uh, the internet probably wasn't quite as as good at all points as it might have been. But we hope you'll enjoy it. And it's on a theme that you may be able to identify with, which is li- living with with regrets. And this is Jessica, a, 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 a beautiful young woman who won a, a prestigious scholarship when she was 16 or 17 to go from Miami, where she was raised, to New York uh, to study. She'd been a ballerina from age three, and and uh, she was a, a top prospect, and she got this prestigious full scholarship to study in New York and maybe have a chance to join the, the Bolshoi Ballet. The, the Joffrey uh, Ballet. The Joffrey ba- Ballet. Uh, and uh, and but her mother said, you have to uh, live with your grandparents if you're going to want to move to New York, uh, because I guess there's a kind of overprotective or protective uh, culture in uh, the, the Cuban culture. And uh, I think her parents were were from Cuba and and she rebelled being a you know, a energetic young young woman and, and and independent and and turned it down because she didn't want to be having to live with her grandparents, and uh, and then her her life uh, has been a, a very good one that she can be very proud of, but she's been living with painful regrets, and it's a very moving uh, p- p- podcast. Uh, and and if you've ever looked back on your life and and regretted something. Uh, I, I see it all, all, all the time. Uh, you know, did a session with a, a a woman who, who looked back on on her life and deeply regretted something she'd done when she was nine nine years old, and and she'd been hiding it, you know, from from everyone. She was so ashamed until she t- t- talked to me about it, and it, we worked it through in an extraordinarily beautiful way. But uh, you, you maybe you've had things that you re- regret. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, that's why it's a I, universal theme. Yeah. yeah. And so we, we hope that it's, it'll be a great uh, year end. Uh, the, I think this one's on Christmas Day. And for all of you of uh, all religious faiths, you know, happy Hanukkah, happy Merry Christmas, happy holidays, ha- happy atheism if that's your 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 bent uh but we just want to love everybody and and we think this is a very touching session and today you'll hear the uh, initial testing and empathy as jessica tells her story 
And then next week on New Year's Day, uh, you'll, you'll hear the, the wonderful conclusion to the work that, that she did. And uh, this was, again, I had the pleasure of working with you, Rhonda, which is always fun when we do co-therapy together. And this was at an international conference. And so we had a chance to help plant, plant the seed of Team CBT in Mexico. Yeah, thank you. And again, it was an, a great honor for me, as always, to be working with you. So take it away, David and Rhonda. Let's show us what you did. All right. I want to thank everyone for being so patient with the, the delay and getting started. Uh, thank you, Rhonda, for making all these cool things happen all over the world with your brilliance and your lovely warmth and graciousness and chipper attitude, even in the in the face of extreme difficulties. And Jessica, we're just so grateful to uh, be able to work with you and for your courageous volunteering to be in the patient role when we work with people live. It's the best training for people to see how team actually works, but it's also the best training for the person in the patient role because you get to, to see what it's like and, and see what is working and what, what doesn't work. And I think for all of us, when we do our personal work, we bring much greater power and peacefulness to our patients. And so this is a very special experience for me, and, and, and you're, you're making it possible, and I hope it's a really good one for you, Jessica. We'll start out with yes, a little. David, can I say thank you for thank you? We all thank you for creating this incredibly powerful team CBT model, and we also thank you for joining us from California and giving your time and your effort to train the the Mexican therapists and spreading team throughout the world. Yeah, I really appreciate you. Yeah, well, thank you. It's 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 really very touching and very exciting. It's amazing to be sitting here and, and hearing. <laughs> we'll start out with a little testing. How are you feeling in the here and now with every patient at every at the start and end of every session? And that way we can see, first of all, what the patient's feelings are, the severity, because you can't tell from the outside. Sometimes people look really, really down, and but they're not really feeling that bad and sometimes people look happy and joyous and they're on the edge of suicide and and so the 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 the, the tools which I'm holding up here this is the the brief mood survey um that will, you filled out before the session fill it out at the end and then we'll be able to see if we were effective or or not effective and these tools are both incredibly illuminating but also challenging because you, the therapist, will often find out things that you didn't want to know. Like you might find out, find out that your session wasn't helpful to the to the patient, and you might find out that the patient is giving you a failing grade on empathy when you thought you were doing great. And that type of thing happens all the time. And if you keep your ego out of it, they, they, you can get breakthroughs through those kind of therapeutic errors. Um, but at any rate. On the depression test, which goes from zero to 20, your score uh, looks like it was a six. And so that's just mild level of depression. But two of the, the items were rated moderately. And discouraged or hopeless is moderately. So that's sad to be feeling that way. And a little a quiet, moderate loss of motivation to do things. And then on top of that, a little bit of... Uh, sadness and uh, a little loss of pleasure or satisfaction in life, but no loss of self-esteem uh, uh, or feelings of worthwhileness. So that's a, a strength there for sure. And there's no suicidal thoughts or urges. <clears throat> the anxiety is similar to the depression. It uh, looks like it's uh, 7 out of 20. The depression was 6 out of 20. So Again, it's a kind of a mild level of anxiety. And then the uh, anger and frustration are, are also 7 out of 20. So a kind of mild uh, 
you know, mild level of frustration and anger. But all of those, uh, you know, feelings, the negative feelings, although they're not severe, they're certainly enough to rob you of, of happiness. Mm -hmm. And your happiness score is 14 out of 20, where zero is no happiness at all. And, and 20 is, you know, just extremely happy. So there's a lot of room for improvement there. Uh, a lot of the, the items are, are a lot, but they're not extremely like feeling uh, worthwhile and high self-esteem is, is a lot, but not extremely. And uh, happy and joyful is a lot, but not extremely. Motivated and productive is moderately, but not a lot or extremely. So there, it, it, it's, there, there's definitely room for a tune-up. And your relationship satisfaction with Marcello, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, or Marcello, yeah. uh, is uh, 30 out of 30, which I would say is very unusual. This is my relationship or marital satisfaction score goes from zero to 30 and very few people have at least that i see in clinical situations have have scores of of 30 it's just very satisfied in every aspect of your relationship so that's a, a great strength so before we go into your daily mood log uh, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about your problem i looked at your daily mood log and, and thought about it and uh, feel sad uh, f for you too why don't why don't you tell me tell us about it and uh, Rhonda and David will try to do a little e equals empathy and during this just for teaching purposes during this empathy phase we're not going to try to help you at all Jessica we're just going to try to understand what you're thinking and, and what you're feeling and try to give a sense of uh, warmth and acceptance and and respect but we're not going to interpret anything or give advice or or anything that would be so-called therapeutic we're just trying to want to enter into your world uh, and, and see things as you're seeing them yes so um thank you dr burns for um understanding my my emotions and stuff my feelings in the uh, brief mood survey as far as a little bit of my background, I was I was a professional dancer, ballet dancer, and uh, danced since I was three years old. And at 17, I had just graduated high school and had gotten a scholarship to New York University and to dance for a Joffrey Ballet. So I was extremely happy and overwhelmed with, with excitement. And I come from a culture, a uh, Hispanic culture, Cuban, where they're extremely protective. And that leaving home wasn't something that was accepted. So um, additionally, as a, as a career, ballet wasn't seen as it's a true career. You always had to go to school and study something that was much more um, meaningful, quote unquote. So at 17, I got the scholarship. I approached my parents are divorced. Um, I approached my mom saying that I wanted to leave to New York. And her response was, yeah, you can move, but you're going with your grandmother and grandfather. So that was like a complete turnoff um, to not want to move to New York at 17 with my grandmother and my father. And my dad decided to buy me a brand new car and gave me an out. So how like, okay, so it did not accomplish what I wanted. And I was, I, I am extremely resentful to this point. Um, obviously, life continued. Um, you didn't accept. I'm sorry? So, so you did not accept the scholarship? I did not accept the scholarship. I did not go to New York. Um, I continued dancing here. It, well, not here in Miami. I'm from Miami, Florida. Uh, not at the level that I wanted. And um, it deeply hurts me because that's always been my dream. So it's been um, emotions that I've battled, tried to accept, um, chose a different career path. But I feel it's never completely fulfilled me. So, 
whatever that'll be. So you're in tears and feeling sadness. Just, you know, let those tears come tumbling out. And, and it's it's so sad to hear what you're saying. Um, and uh, I want to just summarize that I got most of it, not maybe not 100%, 100% but <laughs> I, I, I take notes, so I, I try to try to get it and and you were saying you were a professional dancer really from age three to 17 and um and you got a, a scholarship uh, to go to a, 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 a ballet in new york which was very prestigious and um you were excited that you were accepted now you were living in uh florida at this time mm -hmm. yes and um, where were you born? I was born in Miami, so I'm born and raised in Miami. Okay, and um, but you're saying that in your family system and uh, maybe the uh, cultural system that you were living in, that ballet was not seen as a quote true career, so that there wasn't a great deal of encouragement and excitement and congratulations i guess from your family about that and uh, and your your mom said that you, you you can accept the scholarship but you'd have to when in moving to new york you'd have to live with your grandparents and that uh, that that didn't uh, appeal to you at all there might have been something about your dad said he he buy you a new car or something like that as a compensation. Oh, I guess I got that right. Um, and, uh, and now uh, you, you're, you, you became tearful when you, you said, I'm, I'm extremely re resentful. I, I did not accept the scholarship. Um, I, I, I continued to dance in, in Miami and I've battled these emotions of, of tears and sadness and, and, and resentment. How how old are you, are you now, Jessica? Funny question. Um, I'm 40. Uh, how old? I'm 40 years old. 40. Oh, my goodness. I thought you were going to say you were 23 or something like that. <laughs> Uh, and and so, what have you been been doing <laughs> recently? You do, don't laugh. This is serious. <laughs> the uh, yeah, just as as an aside, uh, uh, when I do therapy, I, I I don't maybe with you too, Rhonda. I don't know. I know when we do it together, there's there's a lot of laughter. And I, mm -hmm. I really love laughter, and I think it can it can be part of the healing process, and also part of the connection, warm connection process with with somebody. But what have you been doing uh, professionally? Uh, still dancing, or so I danced until I had my first daughter. She's fourteen years old, so about fourteen years ago, I stopped dancing, and then I kept trying to find something that would bring me close to it. I got my bachelor's in, in uh, journalism, so I was on TV for uh, some time, and then uh, decided that wasn't it, and moved, got my master's in uh, mental health counseling, and currently I'm a licensed mental health counselor. Um, my mom is a psychologist, and she owns her own practice, and I work there. Uh, you're working for your mom. Did you say yes. that? Yes. Okay. Wow. And how long have you been doing clinical work? So I got my license. I, I graduated since 2003 as a, my master's in mental health field. And I was in and out doing it for uh, quite some time. I became officially licensed because, you know, in, in the States, you have to be actually be licensed. I was a registered intern for quite some time. A very long time, actually, because I didn't want to commit to taking my license because I didn't want this to be my final career. Oh, so yeah. I kept postponing mm. taking that exam, trying to find other avenues. Um, and then I have all these loans. So I was like, I think it's about time to get my license. And I got my license about a year and a half ago or two years. 
year. Um, I got my license and, and then now I'm officially licensed. And since then I became a national certified counselor and I also became a subject matter expert for um, the national uh, mental health examination for counselors. Oh, okay. Um, uh, do you enjoy your work working with clients? I guess you would, you use the word client rather than patient. Do you do you yeah, enjoy you that, that, yeah. that that work? Um, Yes. Yes, I enjoy it. I, I love to make a difference in people's lives. I love to um, bring out the best in them and I love to um, to help. That's always been one of my, I consider it to be one of my strengths to always help others and to go above and beyond. Yeah, you love helping others. I do too, especially uh, when, when someone uh, has a sudden and dramatic improvement, it, it always seems kind of like a miracle, and it affects me, and, and I would imagine you too, Rhonda, as, as much as it it's affects the, the patient or client or whatever word you want to use. I'm, I'm kind of addicted addicted to that, but it sounds like uh, you've, you've done a lot of things uh, uh, that that you you danced until your first daughter was uh, born, and that was uh, fourteen years ago. And one way we calculated that is 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 because she's fourteen now. <laughs> that was <laughs> good <I'm> math. Sorry. <laughs> and then uh, you uh, got your bachelor's in journalism, and I think you were on uh, TV for a while, maybe announcing the news or or some such thing, which is pretty pretty awesome. But uh, that didn't seem like where you wanted to continue your career. Then you got a master's in counseling. And uh, and you began working with your mom. She's a psychologist and has her own practice. And and you graduated from your master's degree in two thousand three, and and kind of postponed getting your license because it seemed like then you're settling into a, this career, and you still had hopes for something maybe more glamorous, more more exciting, and seemed maybe like s settling, uh, and and. Uh, but uh, eventually you realized you had to get your license. You had to pay your educational loans back. So you got it about two years ago. And then you've become a bit of an expert in some, something having to do with the national examinations or national examiners, some, something of that nature. And that you do love your your clinical work and and you really love love helping others. But still this whole time, there's been feelings of uh, disappointment and falling short and having made, made the, the the wrong d decision and and that type of thing and that's that's been really uh, not only causing negative emotions uh, frequently but also um, uh, ro robbing you of maybe the really full positive emotions that one might want to experience. Is that, is that same? pretty pretty accurate yes yes it does definitely um it does uh, uh, I will, i'll let you put put your spin on the the empathy piece if you would R rhonda uh okay so jessica to go back to when you were 17 is that okay we do that yes so you started dancing when you were three and now you're 17, so your entire life you've been dancing since you could walk, right? Yes. And you get this incredible opportunity to dance with one of the premier dance companies in the United States or maybe the world, the Joffrey Ballet, and a scholarship to the New York University. Yes. Both. Yes. And so I imagine we're so excited, and I could just be hardly be contained with that excitement. For that opportunity and you said you your, your heritage is cuban and the cuban culture is very protective as most cultures i imagine are with 17 year old young women and so your mom said sure you can go as long as you go with your grandparents right you know i know i'm repeating what david already said and you said and 
in that moment of making the decision, should I live with my grandparents and go have this incredible opportunity, you said, no, I'm not going to do that. And um, I did a little bit of math. So when you were, you're 40, so that was 23 years ago. Yes. Right? Yeah. Um, so you've been carrying this resentment that you didn't get that scholarship for 23 years. Absolutely right. So that sounds like such a heavy burden to carry. Does it feel that way to you? Extremely heavy. And I find myself many times um, taking it out on my mom and blaming her for it. Yeah, I was, I was wondering because now you're in a situation where you're actually working for your mom. So I imagine you're seeing her a lot and we're not really doing re relationship work today, but I'm just wondering what that, how that feels for you to carry that resentment and working with your mom constantly. What is that like for you? I've always had a close relationship with my mom. Um, so I, I, I tend to just put it behind. And then in specific moments where we might talk about it or um, I get irritated or something with her, you know, I'll I'll just spit it at her sometimes. I'll just throw it out there and say it. Um, so it it hasn't impacted, or I don't think it had. It hasn't impacted our relationship per se as mother and daughter. It's just a resentment that I carry, and then I just display it and not being able to be completely fulfilled in my professional career. Right. So there are times in your relationship with your mom, you're already close to her, but the times even now when you get into a, a disagreement or have a challenge, you'll throw at her. And you, it was because of you, I didn't go to the job in ballet. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So um, that's still a big weapon. Yeah, yeah. it, it is. It feels good, huh? A it little? feels great. Yeah. <laughs> at least I feel like I threw it at her. <laughs> yeah. It's your fault. Um, yeah. My daughters always blame me, so I was like, let me blame her. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and even though you're a... You're a counselor, you're certified, you're doing this subject matter expert work, and um, you're on another board. You you haven't been able to completely throw yourself into your work wholeheartedly? No, because I don't, I don't, I don't feel I have the full motivation for it. Uh -huh. um, because it's not what I really wanted. <laughs> I've learned, I love it. Um, but, and then, my niece is a beautiful dancer. My my daughters didn't um, inherit the gene, so did, did <laughs> or like, didn't. again, that was my frustration. I would like grab her toes and push them down and turn her out. I'm like, come on, you can dance. She hates it. Um, but my niece has the genes, and she dances at a where I used to dance at Miami City Ballet. She dances, and every time I see her excel, um, I love it. But it hurts me more. Yeah. So watching your niece dance at the Miami City Ballet where you danced brings up that resentment and sadness. I can see like let those tears go. Yeah. The sadness and I imagine the irritation a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And the disappointment. Yeah, because yeah, I think back of um um should have been me. <laughs> yeah. Shall we add that? It should have been me to your Daily mood log? Yeah. I feel sad yeah. too, and I can see the the warmth between you and Rhonda, which is a beautiful thing. And I'm I'm also sad that you've been carrying this uh unfulfilled dream uh that that uh that somehow eluded you because of your mom's uh, overprotection and maybe your own rebelliousness or whatever, but you've been mm -hmm. angry, you've, you've, you've been feeling disappointed, frustrated, d discouraged, and n no matter what you do uh, in, in your counseling field, in your professional life, it's, it's always, uh, uh, you know, something big that, that's missing. And although you love your niece and you're so happy for her and her beautiful dancing, it it hurts you to to see to to, to see that and to, to see, you know maybe to think that I, I I could have had something really great a really great career, and uh, and that's a, a tremendous pain that you have. And um, let me let me just ask you a question. Um, the uh, 
how how are Rhonda and David doing in terms of three three things? Uh, one would be understanding how, how you're thinking, and you know I can go through the daily mood log and a few minutes and get your exact thoughts and so people will know i think they have a copy of your mood log can can, can look but like what one of your thoughts is is i'm a failure and uh, we'll go into into all of them uh, but but all these thoughts and memories create a lot of negative emotions and how well have we done at understanding that and to what extent do you feel a sense of acceptance or liking or or, or respect? How, how would you give us an A, a B, a C? How are we doing so far on empathy and support? An E. Okay, and why? How? Why is that? Or what? What are we doing? Um, that? You both have uh, given me the opportunity to to express myself. Um, you've said it back to me um, many times in my own words. So um, it makes me feel good that you're able to listen. Yeah. Um, and you've also provided that um, empathy of, of making me feel important and, and what I'm saying is important. Well, th thank you for that, for that kind comment. It means a lot to us both. Um, Dave, may I add one more thing? You sure can. So I'm also wondering about the grief over this huge loss. Have you, have you, I'm feeling a lot of grief myself. Like, like there's a death in your family, the, the death of the ballet dream, even though you still continue dancing with Miami City Ballet. Well, no, I mean, I'm not dancing anymore. Um, no, but for you. But yes, um, yeah, it is grief because the older I get, that's it. Like it's. I realized that it just passed and it's time to move on. So yeah, there could definitely be grief there. Yeah, that's what I'm feeling. Yeah. yeah. Do you often cry over it? Um, I used to cry more. Well, over this situation, yes. This situation gets me extremely emotional. It really yeah. does. Um, it touches strong and hard because it's so much sacrifice to be a dancer. Oh yeah, yeah. All the it's fun so things. So many aspects of life. Yeah, mm. I went through a lot. So yeah, that's why I think it hurts. You're really kind of a full time professional from the time you're three or four years old, yeah. right? And, and yeah. having to learn and discipline and not may, maybe play as much with the other kids and. And and do the fun things and getting out of high school was maybe thinking, well, now I can have, have some fun in life and, you know, date and, you know, be a little on the wild side. And then uh, then th th that's going to be clamped down and then you kind of lo lo lose all of that. I imagine the sacrifice was just phenomenal. Yeah, it, it took a lot. I missed out on a lot. My body suffered a lot. Um, I, I unfortunately went through some, uh, I threw, I would make myself throw up and, <laughs> um, I suffered with my, my body image a lot. It was, a, it was just a lot of sacrifices, a lot of things to give up, um, a lot of parties and proms and stuff that you miss. That at, at, at that point I was I'm happy. Um, I don't regret that portion. I regret not taking that step, mm. uh, doing more. So you don't regret the sacrifice. No, you loved dance so much that the sacrifice was worth it. Yes, and you don't miss. You you don't regret missing the parties while you're dancing. You may not regret, and the grief is not filling and going to the job you sitting about it. Exactly. You say you've sacrificed a lot with your body. You're talking about like sprained ankles and broken bones and exhaustion or like all of that or what? A lot of that. Yeah, I had many dances with um, broken ankles and, um, you know, I had an Achilles tendon, um, her pain as well. I also um, had to maintain a certain body weight. Oh yeah. yeah. So I would catch myself um, 
dieting a lot. Um, unfortunately, I would make myself throw up. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so, yeah. yeah so, I, some, I, some bulimia in, in, in there. Yeah. Was was that extremely common among ballet dancers? All of us. Yeah, yeah it was all around. Um, we had, we knew we would get weighted. They had a uh, balance, and if we had a performance coming up, or if we had something, um, they would weigh us. And if we were like over a little bit overweight, they were like, "We're too fat this week. What did you eat?" And that was like our trigger to like either starve ourselves or go and throw up. You know, whatever. Um, quick approach we had to to do to satisfy that goal of whatever we had to accomplish that week. Yeah, oh gosh, wow. My, my heart is just so full and feeling so sad. So here you are, Achilles tendon, broke ankle, but you're about to do a performance and someone, you might be one or two pounds overweight and you get this you know, abusive, you're fat, you can't dance, what's the matter with you? And then pushing you into bulimia and and yet, after years of that sacrifice, you weren't able to fulfill your ultimate dream. And that is preventing you for the next 23 years to create a career where you're 100% happy. Yes. Like there's this little bit of unhappiness always murking. 100%. It's there. Yeah. Feeling really sad and close to you, though. Yeah, I have a, a question for you, Jessica. Um, you, you've told us some very uh, emotionally compelling and and sad things and regrets. And if this is a, a successful session and a good uh, learning experience, it could probably be touching so many people who have regrets about the past not not like yours but other other kinds of of, of regrets uh, and and suffering but i i think so many people have have regrets about things that they have lost in their lives and so many tr tragedies that people and losses that people have and so we'll, we're dealing with that theme today as well as with you as a beautiful and and hurting human being and so but my question would be uh you you've given us wonderful information wonderful warmth and tears um and uh would would this be a time for us to roll up our sleeves and maybe uh, get to work on some aspect of that or do you need more time to talk and vent and have us listen because that's important too and we don't want to jump in be before you're, you're you're ready i'm ready to start working on it okay and then let me have a well let, let me let Rhonda take over again and we're we're just from teaching purposes we've done the t of T E A M. We've done testing. T equals testing. E equals empathy, and now we're on to A equals paradoxical agenda setting or assessment of resistance. And we want to kind of find out what what you want help with, and then see if we can bring some resistance uh, to conscious awareness before we try to to change anything. So you want to kind of t take the next couple of steps here, Rhonda? Sure. Um, I'm going to ask you two questions. The first one is, you know, you've done a lot of self-disclosure, pretty intimate details of your life, and I'm wondering how are you feeling right now, this moment? Um, I've been a little comfortable that I just have been in front of everybody. <laughs> yeah, I have to admit, something I've always kept, um, you know, just between close family members. Yeah, I can understand feeling uncomfortable. And so with that, uh, the self-disclosure and the pain and the years of judgment and regret and grief, if you had the most, David and I gave you the most miraculous personal work session and you, and you left, you're going, oh my God, that was so awesome. How would your life be different? What, what would change for you? I want to be able to accept. Um, 
and life did not. And that there was probably many reasons why I didn't make that decision. And um, be able to to find that, to not have that missing aspect um, in my life. Uh -huh. I'm going to ask you to summarize that for me, Rhonda, if you can, because I had trouble understanding yeah. it. Uh, just from a sound okay. perspective. Okay. So, you know, the, her response to the miracle cure question is that Jessica would like to accept that life did move on for her and that there were a lot of reasons. There are many reasons she didn't choose to move to New York with her grandparents. And there was a third one. Um, and be able to yes. not have that emptiness, you know, of my profession. Yeah, Curry. not have the, the emptiness uh, and the regret of, you know, that little, that little, what do I say, smirk? <laughs> like, oh, I should have done this, I should have yeah. done this. That's living constantly, like letting that go. Yeah. Okay, so now I have a, a question, and we can do kind of tag team on this if you like, Rhonda, that um, uh, uh, I suppose then that we had a magic button and if you pressed it all of your negative thoughts and feelings would instantly disappear so you'd be feeling great joy and happiness and you'd have no anger or regret or irritability or or or, or, or sadness or frustration or disappointments about the past you'd you'd let all of that go and you'd just be a you know flooded with with joy and excitement and optimism would you and, and this would require no no work on your part you just have to press this magic button would you press it yes i would okay um well uh, <laughs> that's what almost everybody says because no one wants to hurt and and suffer and suffer and uh we all want to be be happy so it makes good sense now we don't have a magic button but we do have some powerful techniques that sometimes almost do seem magical and we can't promise anything but if we work together there's just an excellent chance we can bring about the result that you're looking for but i'm not at all convinced that that would be a good idea right we would be reluctant to have you push that magic button because i think that your feelings express beautiful parts of who you are as a person and they reflect your core values of how you want to live your life. And maybe the feelings also give some kind of an advantage. And I'm wondering if now would be a good time to try to identify what those are. Yes. Do you want to pull up that pen and that? Yes. As an aside, Rhonda, I would have loved to have heard your answer, but her answer before you jumped in. Um, just, just, well, I, I told her I wasn't sure it would be a good idea and I was waiting for her to say, why not? I, I was going to, <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was going to ask the right one. Yeah, yeah. And then, but anyway, that's, that, that's, that's, okay, that's cool. Okay. There, there may be some positives hiding in there that we should look at before we go about ch changing some things. So would you be willing to do that with us for just a few minutes here? Yes. Um, and specifically, we, we'd like to say, f f let, let's, I'll, I'll read your daily mood log to the group, and then we can say, wh what are these negative thoughts and feelings? Uh, we're going to ask f f three or four or five questions about your negative thoughts and feelings on the daily mood log. Of your negative thoughts, we can ask, is there some truth in this thought? And of your negative thoughts and feelings, we can say, uh, is there uh, are these negative thoughts and feelings uh, totally appropriate given the circumstances in your life? And then we can also ask: Are they these negative thoughts and and feelings helping you in some way, beneficial to you? And then um, we can also ask the the, the question: uh, What do these negative thoughts and feelings show about you? 
and your core values, that's beautiful and positive and awesome. And the final question is, were there what would might be some negative consequences if you press that magic button and all these negative thoughts and feelings disappeared? So we have five questions we can ask. And um, I'm going to ask you to, to if you do you have your mood log in front of you? If not, I can read it. If it yes, I have it. OK, wh why don't you just uh, review it uh, verbally, the 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 incident, the the the, the emotions and their, their how strong they are and, and, and your negative thoughts and how, how much you believe them. Um, so. Uh... As far as uh, the emotions, I placed that I was sad, depressed, unhappy at a 90%. Um, I was anxious, I, anxious, anxious, worried, nervous at a 90%. Sad and ashamed at a 95%. Inadequate at a 90%. Lonely at a 92%. Foolish at a 100%. Discouraged at a 97%. I marked frustrated, stuck, thwarted, and defeated at 100%. I also marked all angry, mad, resentful, annoyed, irritated, upset, furious at a 95%. And before we go on to your negative thoughts, that was a beautiful job. And once again, just a minor teaching point is that you're a, a very uh, lovely, chipper, charming, funny, ha happy seeming per person to s someone to, to meet you. And, and yet these f feelings are at the same level as patients on the Stanford inpatient unit. And I'm not trying to say you should be in the hospital far from it, but that the feelings are as intense as, as people who are in the Stanford Hospital psychiatric unit getting shock therapy and all kinds of pills and, and things. And that's why we I, I like to test things at the beginning and end of sessions, because first to see how the person is feeling and then to see what kind of change we might be able to, to to bring about because if you have a great change there's something to learn and if you fail there's a tremendous amount to, to learn and then you can correct your error the the next the next time you you work with that person and then go over your your negative thoughts that were triggering these tremendously powerful negative feelings yeah, so um, again, my negative thoughts referring to my specific event that I visited uh, back when I was 17. I felt I'm a failure, and I put that at a 90%. Um, that this always happens to me because I sat at everyone else's needs before mine. I feel that I always put everyone else before my own desires, and I put that at a 95%. I feel like an idiot that I didn't follow my dreams um, at 100%. I blame my parents for truly not understanding the career path that I wanted. I put that at a 90%. Um, nothing would truly fulfill my professional career. I put that at 100%. Um, I said I did so many sacrifices for nothing at a 95%. I should have been smarter when I said uh, to my mom that I didn't want to go on my own, uh, that I wanted, I'm sorry, that I wanted to go on my own, uh, that I wanted to go on my own instead of uh, not going at all. And I put that at 95%. Um, I feel I've never reached the prestige and the level that I wanted for my professional career. Put that at a 90%. I wrote, um, I'm so stupid and now I'm stuck forever. Um, I feel like I'm stuck in the same. Um, cycle over and over. And I put that at ninety-seven percent, and then I put I must settle for my professional career now, and I put that at one hundred percent. And also another minimal teaching point is that the intensity of belief in these negative thoughts is extraordinarily high, 
90% and 95% and 100%. And that's worth noticing too, because although we'll probably find these thoughts are very distorted, uh, when when people are upset, we, we believe these thoughts so intensely. So it, it, it's not going to be easy to, uh, to, to modify the way uh, you're, you're, you're thinking or, or, or feeling or, or anyone who's, who, who, who's down because it's not how these thoughts look to, to us. It's how they look to, to you. And they seem pretty incredibly powerful and compelling. Now, before we see what we can do to, to change this, uh, Rhonda was stating so, so beautifully that, uh, there, there might be some really beautiful things and uh, in, in positives in, in these thoughts and feelings. Let, let, let's see if let's make a list and we can just call it positives just to keep the list very simple. And uh, let, let's and, and I always write this down and encourage you to, to write it down too. And the, the people who are listening, can you see any uh, positives and answers to those those questions, five questions I brought up earlier of your some of your thoughts or feelings? What what are these show about you that's pretty awesome? Um, what did we start with? Jeez. What if we start with the sadness cluster? That's pretty high at 90%. Okay. Um, so kind of what what does, I guess the question is, what does the sad, the depression, the unhappiness bring out in me positively? What is it? Yeah, about? what's what's really awesome about you being sad and, and depressed? If you press the magic button, your sadness and depression will totally vanish. Um, that I'm someone that's passionate. Oh, great. Is that true? Yes. Is that true that you're passionate? Yes. Is is that important? Is it important? Yeah, to be passionate? Yes. Is yes. that powerful? Yes, it is. Okay, let's put down. It shows that you're <clears throat> you're 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 passionate. So it, that that's that's certainly a beautiful thing, right? Mm-hmm. What what else does the sadness uh, is awesome about your your sadness? What else does it show about you, your values, and who you are as a person? And again, we were talking about my sadness, right? Um, not too sure how much. Sadness, depression, and happiness um, can bring out positive feelings or benefits. Um, you know, um, I'll need some help with understanding that, Rhonda. She she doesn't know the, another one. Oh, it doesn't know another one. Um, well, maybe we can uh, su- suggest one. Um, the um, and maybe these are just different ways of saying the same thing, but it it seems to me it, it shows. Your love for 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 dancing and 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 your love you know for the for the ballet. Uh, yes, very much. Yeah. So. so and and no. and and if you press the magic button and it went away, it would be like you know. Okay, I'll just toss that aside. Do you well, see what I, I, I mean? I don't want to stop my love. Yeah, I definitely don't want to stop my love. Yeah. yeah. So it shows your your. Your your love of uh, of dance and um, uh, and 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 just how profound that is. Can you see any other uh, positives in this sadness? I can see one more. How dedicated you are to having a fulfilled career, fulfilling career. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think about that, but yeah, mm-hmm. um, that's a huge. And I was actually very dedicated to ballet as well. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's it's. Uh, yeah, the uh, as well. I don't know if that's a benefit. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's a benefit. She said yeah. she's emotional. Yeah, that's that, that's really neat. Very deeply. Yes, I do. 
I, I had a cat who uh, we, we adopted a feral cat who came to our door and uh, wounded. He, he, he was a violent cat and uh, we, we were trying to get rid of him, get him off our property because he was threatening our other gentle little kitties. But he came to the back door once, uh, almost dead. And he and he had the courage to, to come to our. We have a glass kitchen door and, and look up to me. And he held his his foot up, and it was as big as his head. And uh, I could see he had been wounded, and he couldn't hunt, and he would had lost a lot of body weight. And and we befriended him and uh, uh, and got him captured him, got him to the vet. They did surgery on his foot, and he had a wound from a fight. And, uh, and and over the time, he he became the the best friend I've ever had in my life. And he, we were just in love with each other. And uh, and uh, and then, but he 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 would go out hunting every night for a couple of hours because he was feral. And but he spent most of his time in in the house with us, which was unusual for a feral animal. And uh, but he didn't he didn't come back one one morning, and uh, I I I knew that sooner or later there's a mountain lion behind our house that, that I think the mountain lion finally got him, and uh, I'm going to grieve him his loss forever. And every day when I go out walking, and it must must have been at least five years ago when when we lost him. But there's hardly a minute that I don't I don't think about him, and I talk I talk to him every day when I go out on my daily walk, tell him how much I love him, and uh, and I and, and I, I I'm just so uh, admiring of of I mean you I called him Obi we call because he was like uh, black and white and um, uh, like obsidian or something and and uh, but I'm just so so glad that I I could have had Obi even for for a few, for a number of years, uh, and to have been able to love him so much and to have him love me so much and and I I, I wouldn't ever want my grief to disappear, uh, you know just, just like you have this and still this intense sadness and just shows what a what a loving person you are. Can we add that? To to uh, yes. one of the beautiful things that just you, you, that you're, yeah, I guess we put it, you you love uh, of dance, but that you're a, a loving, uh, a lo a loving person. Um, well, my eyes are getting opened up. Uh, do you want to pick an, another one emotion or thought, uh, Rhonda, that we we could kind of focus on? Let's go to anxious and worried and nervous. That's also at ninety. Um. A benefit of being anxious is that I am very much OCD. <laughs> I want to make sure that I complete my task and that I, um, you know, I'm, I'm responsible. So I think that my anxiousness creates that anxiety for me to be responsible. Yeah, that's things, I, that's that's huge, I, isn't it? Yeah. It is. Yeah. I heard her say two things. I complete my tasks. Oh, yeah. So you don't procrastinate. And I'm responsible. Nice. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I complete tasks. I'm responsible. And what's the third one? I don't procrastinate. Oh, don't don't procrastinate. No, that's right. And uh, does your anxiety keep you vigilant? Yes, uh, it does. Uh, yeah. Okay. Is that important? Yes, it is supposed to be vigilant. Okay, so we got four good things about being anxious, worried, and nervous. How about um, ashamed? You're ninety five percent ashamed. Uh, what What are some beautiful things about shame? Um, I'm con like I, I I get concerned um, about others. Is that important? Yes, I think it shows my my human part of you know of myself. Yeah, that, that that's cool. Uh, 
uh, so it shows I'm concerned about others and what they think about me. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and that I'm shows I'm human. Does it show that I want other people to be proud of me? I want to please other people. Yes. And especially, I think in, I think especially in my career, uh, my mom is such a professional, um, and I, I admire her so much as well. And I feel like I always need to make sure that I make her proud profession. Mm. Oh, so, think, so let's, let's add those, uh, you know, uh, want, want to make her proud. Yeah, it's so interesting. Uh, and then you you get the next shot, Rhonda. Uh, but um, let me just, I, I was going to say, how, how could there be anything good about shame? But it says you're concerned about what others and about other people and how they view you. It shows that you're human and vulnerable. It shows you want to please people in your career Especially, uh, you admire your mom, and you want her to admire her. You want her to be proud of you. Uh, that 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 that's five things right 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 there. Can you think of anything else about great things about the shame? Oh, I can think of more things. What are some other great things about shame? Your shame, Jessica. Nothing else comes to my mind. Well, do you think feeling ashamed? Do you, do you think that? Make, makes you a very arrogant person or more of a humble person? Humble. Humble. Is I that a good quality? Because so, yes. let's let's add that hum, humility. Um, and uh, uh, and then does that humility uh, make it easier for for us to feel close to you? Yes. A lot. I, I, it's true. I always have people um, when they meet me or they feel comfortable enough to come and speak to me or know that I'm always there for them or um, I give them kind of that peace. Um, yeah. Their, um, yeah. So that that's a beautiful thing that people can feel cl cl close to you. Um, I had a, uh, a, a student at Stanford, a, a psychiatric resident, and uh, I I was starting a group for the residents to train them. They're they're you know after medical school they do their residency so you can get your specialty training as a surgeon or in this case a psychiatrist. Uh, I was having a supervision group with about three uh, other students, and uh, she was asking how you would help a patient who who felt defective, and. Uh, and so I was showing all these techniques that you can use to help with defectiveness. And then uh, she, she stopped me and she said, well, D Dr. Burns, uh, but I, I just have to tell you something that uh, I'm asking not only for my patient, but for myself, because I also feel defective because I never had a childhood either. My father was a violent alcoholic. And, and and then I, I I just feel like I'm 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 less than everybody else. And she started sobbing, and 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 she said, "It could is there any hope for me that I could get over this feeling?" And um, uh, so I said, "Well, yeah, let's 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 work with you." And we went through a number of techniques. I have this thing called the recovery circle, and you list all the techniques to help for a negative thought. In this case, I'm defective. And we tried about six or seven that were not helpful, uh, just like every two or three minutes. And and then we came to one called the acceptance paradox. And she said, well, well, how would that work? And I said, oh, well, the way that would work is instead of trying to stop being defective, you would uh, thank your lucky stars that you're defective. And you would view that as the, the greatest part of your life. And and she says, well, that doesn't make any sense. What are you talking about? And, and I said, well, you know, I've always been intimidated by you because you're, you know, what people call you're one of the beautiful people. Your your uh, beautiful appearance, you're, you're brilliant. You have a, a loving family and daughters who, who love you. And you, you, in addition to doing your residency, you're writing prestigious uh, papers that are published in top research journals. 
and you, you, you've got everything. And, and that's why I never was able to feel close to you. But now that you've told me you feel defective, I feel close to you for the first time. And, uh, and uh, so you, you can thank God that, that you're, you feel defective and hope you'll never get over that. And it just went like an explosion in her, her brain. And she said, I see what you mean. She started laughing. And she called me the next morning at 630, got me out of bed and, and said, Dr. Burns, I just have to tell you that uh, I don't feel like a psychiatrist anymore. I feel like a healer. And I can't wait to see my first patient to say, to, to, who says they're defective, say, oh, I, I feel that way too. And I can show you how to get over that. So now she's a full professor at the medical school. And I reminded her of that. And she was, she was really touched. And I said, you, can I tell that, that story about you, you know, to other people? And she said, oh, yeah, you can tell to anyone. You can even give my name if you want. And uh, but it's it it just it just just so so interesting and that I, that I was thinking that that the fact that you're that you're you're kind of have have, have an important part of your life missing, you know that do you, do you see what I'm trying to say? Yes. Not really, David. <laughs> it sounds like nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. I do. And um, and you said something that caught my attention, which was um, cause similar to her. It, it was one of the best years of my life. And yeah. um, within all the ups and all the downs and the crying and the frustrations, um, I think that's why it's so difficult for me to to want to let it go. Yeah. I still one of my, my closest friends are from there, um, so it, it I have such beautiful memories from it as well. So oh, I think that's, that's why it's so hard for me to let it go. Oh yeah, yeah, it's such yeah, it's hard hard to let go. You don't want to let go of something. You shouldn't let go of something that has so many beautiful memories. Absolutely. Let Let's do one one more of these. Uh, uh, Rhonda, it's, it, it's, it's back in, in your court, and then we want to do some, some, some methods too. So, Jessica, why don't you pick the next theme that would be the most important to you for us to positively? Um, angry, mad, resentful, annoyed, irritated, upset, furious. <laughs> angry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know that nice. Right. Yeah. Yes, I feel all ninety five percent against my mom. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Let's not forget. See it. how fast this works. You've already just gone from tears to uncontrollable laughter. That's what I claimed in my lecture yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel it against myself too for not making the best choice. But I'm feeling yeah. it against her. <laughs> Yeah, you don't want to let uh, any opportunity for anger go, you know, you can be angry at others and yourself simultaneously. It's twice as good. But uh, now you and Rhonda can tell us some of the awesome things about being angry and resentful. So what do you think? What is awesome about you that is expressed in your anger? What does your anger show about your core values? Or how does it give you an advantage? Or benefit? My character. Say more. What does that mean? Um, I, I consider it um, to be someone that has um, strength. So I'm someone who has strength? Yes. Okay. Let's write that down. I don't know. I kind of see you as feisty. <laughs> Is that connected to your anger? I can be feisty at times. Yes. Yeah. Um, sarcastic. I think that's a big one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And do you express, do you feel like the feistiness comes from the anger a little bit? Um, yes. Yeah. yeah. How about, and could, let's write that down too. Okay. Do you ever feel that your anger kind of empowers you? Absolutely. Yes. Is it that a good thing? Yes. It does. This is a great list, by the way. Does your anger show that you have a moral compass? And you like to stand up for what's fair and for justice? Yes, I do. Okay. Very much so. I I, I find something um, uh, prejudiced against someone, or I, I stand up a lot for that, um, even with my daughters, even with amongst my 
and um, I stand up for justice a lot. Sure, we'll add that. Uh, does it? Does your anger also show that you hold yourself and other people accountable? Yes, it does. Is, is that important? Yes, it is. I'll put add that to the list. I don't know how many you've got on your list, Rhonda, for this one. Four. I have six. Oh. Shows what a strong woman you are. You're feisty. It can be anger can be angry. You have a moral compass. You stand up for justice, and you hold yourself and others accountable. And then, um, I th uh, d does your anger also show how, how much you care? Mm -hmm. The Thank same you. as your sadness, another version of your passion. Yes, and it shows my yeah. I was say, I was going to say how emotional, how passionate I am, and how much I care. Yeah. So add add, add that. This has been another episode of the Feeling Good podcast. For more information, visit Dr. Burns' website at feelinggood.com, where you will find the show notes under the podcast page. You will also find archives of previous episodes and many resources for therapists and non-therapists. We welcome your comments and questions. If you want to support the show, please share the podcast with people who might benefit from it. You could also go to iTunes and leave a five-star rating. I am your host, Rhonda Borowski, the director of the Feeling Great Therapy Center. We hope you enjoyed this episode. I invite you to join us next time for another episode of the Feeling Good Podcast.